2018 Lamborghini Aventador Review The Good Points of Lamborghini Aventador Incredible V12 Engine Up to 740 bhp, Thrilling Acceleration Light and strong carbon fiber The not so good points of Lamborghini Aventador Traction Great handling, all wheel drive security Stunning supercar design The negative points of Lamborghini Aventador High purchase and running costs Gearbox lacks refinement Infotainment buttons given to Audi Impractical, tough to park Not for shrinking violets the Lamborghini Aventador follows inside tire tracks of the extremely extreme supercars from your Italian company's past, a lineage that stretches to Countach, Diablo and Merslago. Priced from £225,955 before taxes anticipate a payment of £270,000, the Aventador is often a V12, mid-engined, all-wheel drive supercar like not one other given it has no direct rival. A Pagani Huara is the similar in concept, but costs over triple more and it is rear drive only, the Ferrari F12 costs slightly less, however its V12 is defined ahead from the driver, not behind, and supercars such as the McLaren 650S and Ferrari 488 GTB use V8 engines to compete against Lamborghini's entry-level supercar, the Huarkin and undercut the Aventador by around £80,000. The Aventador premiered in 2011 and didn't initially deliver within the promise of its wild looks and extraordinary engine. Most criticism focused around the chassis, the ride quality was poor, plus it wasn't as agile as it may have been. But Lamborghini has since answered those criticisms together with the breathtakingly accomplished Aventador S and racetrack focused SV. Yes, it's still expensive plus it's still impractical, though the Aventador is probably the purest supercar experience is available. And SV designs include even appreciated in value by way of a significant amount. Single V12 engine and all wheel drive only. The Aventador is constructed around a carbon fiber structure, being a Formula One car with the road, you can view this structure whenever you swing the extrovert scissor doors to show the door sills, it indicates the passenger cell in the car is strong, stiff and lightweight, with this particular composite core from the car weighing just 147 kilograms. It's slightly disappointing, then that this Aventador S weighs an overall of 1,575 kg without fluids, however some of that is usually blamed for the huge V12 engine with 7-speed automated manual gearbox, along with the heavyweight all-wheel drive system. The SV is 100 kg lighter. The V12 bucks this look of high-performance cars using smaller more effective engines with turbochargers put in to boost power, the Aventador boasts 6.5 liters and there's not much of a turbocharger coming soon. The engine makes 730 bhp from the S, 740 bhp inside SV, which is paired with a single clutch automated manual gearbox as standard. Again. Rivals have moved the experience on with dual-clutch gearboxes with almost imperceptible shifts, but Lamborghini will explain a single clutch is lighter whilst still being lightning fast. You can leave the gearbox in auto mode, or deal with it via steering wheel shift paddles. Our wheel drive is fairly unusual inside supercar segment, as well as the Aventador's system intelligently assesses which tires can best deal while using power being shipped to them. Mostly, though, it is highly rear biased, with as many as 90% exploring back wheels inside the sport drive mode setting. Race car style pushrod suspension is usually unusual for the road car. Instead of being positioned upright beside each wheel, 
the springs and shock absorbers lean in horizontally towards center on the car. It helps to relieve weight around the wheels, for just a more agile feeling. Audi has owned Lamborghini since 1998. While the Aventador chassis isn't given to any Audi products, the R8 and R can do share chassis and powertrain components, its paternity is obvious inside the cabin. So one of several usual Lamborghini flamboyants of low slung seats as well as a windscreen angle so quick it's almost horizontal, you are doing notice switch gear that's distributed to other Audi products. The selections for personalizing the Aventador are unlimited, as a result of Lamborghini's bespoke ad personam program. 50% of owners specify ad personam components, which range from unique colors to stitching and carbon fiber extras. Lamborghini Aventador Review The Aventador S produces 730 bhp and 509 pounds feet from the 6.5 liter V12 engine. That brings about stunning performance, 062 miles per hour into 2.9 seconds, 0124 miles per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds and also a top speed of 217 miles per hour the SV increases performance slightly to 740 bhp, but crucially what's more, it sheds 100 kilograms. It's why the SV needs a tenth of a second off of the S's acceleration figures. A vent off it doesn't strengthen its top speed. Unlike most rivals, the V12 engine is naturally aspirated, and as a consequence not boosted by turbochargers. This means the torque on the engine is actually small with regards to its power output, and it is peak is delivered much higher in the rev range minus 509 pounds feet of torque 5500 revolutions per minute compares with 553 pounds feet from 2100 revolutions per minute to the Porsche 911 Turbo S, which includes six fewer cylinders. But neither Aventador is lethargic at lower revs, along with the benefit is really a searing power delivery and soundtrack more comparable to F1 cars before they also were downsized and turbocharged. The Aventador pulls keenly from surprisingly low revs, the throttle pedal zings with response, turbo engines can seem to be mushy, and builds in speed and intensity until a screaming 8400 revolutions per minute, just 100 revolutions per minute over redline. It might not function as the most up to the minute powertrain, yet it's one with the very finest production engines around. The 7 speed automated manual gearbox is standard equipment. As its name hints, this can be effectively a manual transmission, though with only a brake and accelerator pedal, your working computer taking car of clutch duties. You can select auto or manual modes. These controlled with paddle shifters. The gear changes are really fast and direct at full speed within the racetrack, but tend to lag somewhat at lower speeds. Lamborghini renders these lower speed shifts smoother within the S model, nevertheless, they remain of the pace for refinement in contrast to dual clutch technology. The Aventador features a choice of three drive modes Strada Street and Italian. Sport or Casa race, plus the gear shifts, chassis settings and steering feel become progressively firmer plus much more aggressive while you progress through them. To this the newer Aventador S also adds Ego mode, allowing the motive force to combine powertrain, chassis and steering settings. If the Aventador's chassis disappointed in the event the car was launched next year, the S marked an overall transformation. The key is really a rear wheel steering system. This technology has been around for decades, but has found favor again. The Aventador's rear wheel steering turns the spine wheels inside opposite direction on the fronts below 81 miles per hour to create the car feel shorter and even more nimble, but within the same direction above that speed to produce the car feel longer and for that reason more stable. The introduction of rear wheel steering adds a genuine sparkiness on the Aventador's handling, 
helping it jink deftly left and right while using driver making only small inputs in the wheel. The old car would feel rather stubborn in contrast, plus the steering felt much slower. The SV gets along fine without rear wheel steering, its slow weight and also expensive Valens shock absorbers ultimately causing a much more agile feeling and improved composure weight against early Aventadors. Our wheel drive helps both Aventadors drop their vast power cleanly, but it's extremely rear biased with as many as 90% with the available power exploring your ear wheels. It allows the Aventador to strike a terrific balance between your purity and responsive rear wheel drive in the majority of circumstances, together with the composure of four years old driven wheels in the event the rear tires set out to lose grip. The Aventador works on the variable rate steering system, meaning the steering ratio becomes progressively faster the further you transform it off center. This makes for stability in the straight line at broadband, but extra responsiveness from smaller inputs on the twisting road. It feels entirely natural, the interest rate progressively increasing, and also the power assistance makes this an uncomplicated car to maneuver around. The Aventador can intimidate on first acquaintance. It features a race car like seating position, a dramatically raked windscreen poor rear visibility and rather scattergun controls, which often can bewilder the uninitiated. The engine start button, by way of example, is accessed by flipping up a bright red, fighter jet style toggle switch. The gear shifts may be taken proper care of automatically or activated manually via shift paddles either side from the steering wheel, but you'll ought to press a button about the center console to decide on reverse and pull the right hand shift paddle to get to first gear. It feels a little fiddly to begin with, which enable it to add on the stress of any three point turn. But the larger mirrors and reversing camera do help, as well as the Aventador is less arduous to drive than initial impressions suggest, the steering is rather light, the seats are acceptably comfortable inside case on DS plus it's very easy to quickly feel in the home. The infotainment is given to Audi, with functions for the central screen adjusted using a rotary controller and also by buttons clearly borrowed from your German manufacturer. The shared hardware does detract on the specialness from the Aventador's cabin, however the infotainment system still lags behind the most beneficial equipment fitted towards the latest DT. But the Aventador interior also feels very radical and alien in the way that evokes the idiosyncratic supercars of years glided by. It's hard to never like it with the, and also you soon learn its quirks. When it was launched, the Aventador suspension was unnecessarily harsh. While the chassis remains firm, it's now impressively compliant for a real driver focused machine, both on S and SV versions. The SV deserves particular praise, its highly expensive Allen shock absorbers delivering exceptional composure over a racetrack, with surprising comfort for the road. It's a waste, then, which the SV's sports seats are incredibly uncomfortably firm, feeling just like wooden structures thinly upholstered in Alcantara. The seats inside S are a great deal more forgiving, though supportive. It's designed to function as the more usable road car, also it is. Firm suspension, huge tires plus a rigid carbon fiber structure entails a decent amount of road noise makes its way through to your cabin, particularly the strippy Doubt SV model. But mostly, it's the noise of the roaring V12 that shouts loudest. Owners are unlikely to complain about this and, really, you might cover countless high-speed miles inside the Aventador without worrying about novel tie-wearing thin, in particular when you're driving the S. More likely, utilizing the Aventador out and about will be more tiresome. You need a certain athleticism to jump in and outside of its low-slung cockpit, as well as gearbox and limited rear visibility don't make reversing the best exercise, thank goodness with the standard reversing camera.
as you'd expect from the supercar costing at the very least £270,000, the Lamborghini Aventador is generously equipped. All the key mechanical specification is standard fit. For the Aventador S, for example the variable array dynamic steering system, rear wheel steering, carbon ceramic brake discs that resist fade even under extreme use, 20 inch front and 21 inch rear alloy wheels with Pirelli P0 tires, and also the 7 speed automated manual transmission with paddle shift controls. Inside, Owners select from either Alcantara or leather upholstery, and there's a TFT LCD digital instrument binnacle, which changes its appearance and sync using the driving mode selected. The infotainment system with satellite and navigation and USB connectivity is usually standard, but while digital radio remains optional, Apple CarPlay is supplied in the factory. CarPlay allows paired back functions from an iPhone for instance maps and music selection to get displayed and controlled with the central infotainment system, in an attempt to relieve driver distraction. Ferrari charges over £2,000 to the same connectivity. The reversing camera which was optional around the Aventador is standard equipment within the S. With such poor rear visibility, it's a necessity. A telemetry strategy is optional, allowing proprietors to record lap times using a race track. The exterior allows most scope for personalization, and buyers are given a long list of colors and finishes, just yellow, white and black are no cost, different styles and finishes to the alloy wheels, different brake caliper colors, and carbon fiber replacement components these add the engine cover and visible parts from the engine bay itself. The range topping of Entador SV takes extreme measures to shed a supplementary 100 kg compared while using S, which implies soundproofing is reduced. There's additional carbon fiber trim, about the door casings, by way of example, and owners forego luxuries just like the satellite navigation, and even the entrance handles are substituted with lighter fabric loops. The SV's lightweight sports seats can also be standard, trimmed in leather and alcantara and built around carbon fiber structures. Because the SV was launched in front of the S, it doesn't share its rear wheel steering system. Whichever evented or you ultimately choose, the probabilities for factory personalization, and vastly inflating that Alwachi high price, with Lamborghini's ad person and program are as almost as limitless since your wealth. There are some things that you can't have, however, however much money you've got, semi-autonomous driver assistance systems. Like most supercars, the Aventador just isn't fitted with blind spot monitoring systems and won't take care with the steering whilst you park, it wouldn't be fitting to get a car this driver-centric. Like Ferrari and McLaren, Lamborghini isn't listed under your own caps crash test ratings. However, given it's built around a carbon fiber passenger cell, the Aventador is inherently strong and stiff, which will make it very safe inside the event of a car accident. While the occupants sit in the carbon fiber cell, the engine and suspension components are backed up by aluminium frames back and front. These aluminium structures provide deformable crash structures, absorbing energy as well as being cheaper to correct than carbon fiber. Even in quite heavy impacts, the carbon fiber passenger cell usually stay undamaged. Should the worst happen, driver, passenger and side airbags are fitted as standard to defend occupants. The Aventador scores highly in relation to active safety measures equipment that helps the trucker avoid accidents. Carbon ceramic brakes provide fierce stopping power, as well as the all-wheel drive system entails you're unlikely to get into trouble inside first place, offering huge reserves of grip that's a match to the hugely powerful mid-mounted V12 engine. Like many new cars, anti-lock brakes along with a stability control system are fitted as standard so even if you need to do have to swerve or stop violently, 
there's a high probability the electronics will help to stop the evented or sliding outside of control. Advanced driver assistance systems for example automatic emergency braking and drowsiness detection technology usually are not fitted, however, as well as the Aventador is usually a little behind the curvature in this respect. Most supercars are. While boot space is probably not on the forefront of your mind whenever you purchase a very beautiful Italian supercar just like Lamborghini Aventador, it's heartening to learn there can be a concession to practicality within the form of any front luggage compartment, good to get a couple of squashy overnight bags. Obviously you can find only two seats with no room inside back because there's a tremendous V12 there. In short, you'll wish to take something more important to be in queue. It's very wide obviously and not particularly very easy to see beyond so for town driving you'll need to go carefully. There is often a nose lift function though that can help navigate speed bumps. Those scissor doors not simply look cool but allow you to get in and out reasonably easy in a very car park, whenever they open conventionally you'd need a ton of space both sides. Oh,